getting started with a Pranix is very, very simple. Again, uh, Pranix solves cloud application resilience. And application resilience is about a system's ability to recover from failures really quickly. When we talk about application system, I'm talking about a distributed application system like this, where the resources are connected to other resources and the dependencies need to be appropriately managed, configurations, and all the other dependent resources need to be properly brought up for recovery purposes, either with a high availability um, to fail over to another region, which also means that you need to protect those application resources at any particular point in time in the same region or across another region or multiple region, uh, regions, depending on the level of application resilience that you really wanted. Um, what that means is that you don't have to do a lot of things that you might be already doing or you might plan to do in the future with respect to protecting your applications uh, for backup, uh, with backups and uh, protecting your application for disaster recovery purposes. Uh, in a Pranix case, it's very, very simple. You simply log in and recover and many customers have done it. So if you wanted to do a quick test with your application environments, all you have to do is to uh, get an account and get started. With a Pranix, what we do is that um, the platform automatically discovers your distributed application environment. Uh, in this particular case, this is a real life environment with uh, 146 different load balancers and so on. And this is doing about $16 billion in mortgage payments every quarter. When a Pranix uh, discovers this environment, all you do is uh, to put your policies protection policies and the Pranix creates something called a cloud time machine with no agents, with all the environment metadata and all the network services are appropriately protected. Your cloud data copies are managed uh, based on your policies, forever incremental, completely agentless, which also means that any auto scaling resources will also be protected appropriately. Uh, as well. And when the auto scaling removes those instances, a Pranix will stop protecting them. And when it comes to recovery, it's very, very straightforward. A Pranix automatically creates a necessary infrastructure as code uh, for you to recover confidently uh, your application environment or environments uh, in appropriate regions other than your production region in an isolated environment uh, as well as. Uh, within the same VPC as well. So let's see how uh, we can actually do that. Uh, for the demo purposes, uh, we have chosen an application called uh, Open EMR, which is basically an emergency medical records application that helps a lot of hospitals to manage their patients' uh, reports and procedures and so on. It's critical during COVID timeframe. So um, this application uh, we use for demo purposes all the time. Now, this application runs across multiple instances. Uh, some might be running at the moment, some might kind of um, not running depending on how your application is at a particular point in time. And this application environment uses multiple instances, compute instances, load balancer instances, RDS, if you look at RDS, just your parameter groups, uh, within the RDS itself is like um, across 30 different pages about 465 different configurations, right? A simple RDS instance can, can be very complicated depending on how you set up. And your VPC itself uh, is made up of multiple services, subnets, route tables, network gateways, uh, customer gateways, uh, and so on. You know, the number of services uh, available for you to manage your application environment will also be changing as the cloud platforms evolve. Now, your application environment, as I mentioned, uh, is very distributed um, and uh, cloud enabled or completely created on the cloud um, uh, services as a native application. To get started, uh, what you do is you get an application, uh, a Pranix uh, account. 
and you create something called a cloud connection. Cloud connections are nothing but a connection into your cloud account. And to create a cloud connection is very simple. You simply log in and add something called cloud connection. You select AWS. You can also use uh, Microsoft Azure or uh, Google Cloud, similar to AWS. We cover all three big clouds. And in this particular case, simply add a dev um, test connection as an example. And uh, select the provider. You select the primary region where your application is running. In this particular case, uh, Northern Virginia is our production region. And you can select any number of recovery regions. So right there, you get uh, the you get to use uh, the capabilities of the cloud platform where you don't have to worry about the infrastructure availability. You simply select and go. Right. So you can protect your East Coast application across to the West Coast, multiple regions of the West Coast, or you can go to Canada, or you can go to Europe as well. Uh, utilizing these regions is as simple as just selecting those regions and selecting next. As you can see, all the services uh, are covered uh, with respect to uh, the basic infrastructure services, as well as platform services, file system services, and so on. Within RDS, you have all the RDS uh, types, as well as Aurora as serverless uh, services as well. You simply select Next, and um, Opranix automatically creates the necessary cloud formation to run and provide us the permission for us to discover your application environment. Once you create that, it will look like this. Um, and application environment discovery is as simple as, for example, uh, going into uh, a connection like this. So if you go in there, uh, you can see uh, the number of computes that are discovered, um, the compute configurations, all the metadata, everything uh, will be discovered really, really quickly within minutes. Um, and uh, the application load balancer and associated tags and the dependencies uh, will be calculated based on the cloud connection. Once uh, the discovery is complete, uh, the product will automatically prompt you to create something called a cloud assembly. Cloud assembly, uh, as intuitive as uh, it says, it's very, very simple. And uh, in this particular case, simply uh, put a name for your cloud assembly and select the primary uh, region and the recovery region, depending on the uh, cloud connection here. Once you create the cloud assembly, it will look like this. Um, the resources within the cloud assembly will look uh, like this, including the native cloud icons and so on, so that you know uh, your operations groups are really familiar with those um, infrastructure services. And if you uh, wanted to modify uh, the resources for the cloud assembly, you can quickly edit and modify those resources. As you can see, Apranix doesn't need for you to select the entire blueprint of your application. It is not necessary because it's completely automated. All you select is a set of compute services. In fact, you can simply tag those compute instances or other instances for that matter uh, from your DevOps pipeline or um, directly on the console. Apranix will automatically discover them uh, every time we run the discovery based on the policies. Now. Um, this is very useful uh, when it comes to auto scaling because auto scaled resources uh, hopefully will be automatically tagged. In that case, Apranix automatically discovers them and adds them into the cloud assembly for you to be able to protect those uh, resources. Now, after that one time work of adding a cloud connection, adding a cloud assembly, um, we need you to just add your policies, protection policies. So if you look at uh, protection policy is very simple you know just add a name select the time zone and add hourly uh, daily weekly monthly yearly um, uh, protection types or if you wanted to push you can go to 30 minutes or 15 minutes all you have to do is to just add your retention counts how many copies that you want to retain in your primary region and how many copies that you want to retain in the other region that is all there is to it, which means that at any point in time, uh, you have 
the capability to recover your application environment in the same region or the other region. Now, you can stack these policies in our weekly, daily, yearly, and so on. And our Pranix automatically creates an application environment time machine. It looks very simple, that's the idea. But if you go in there, Apprentix automatically discovers all those resources all the time because those environment resources might be changing as we speak, right? Um, and all those resources are protected uh, in the same region where the production runs so that you can quickly recover in the same region if something were to go wrong, or you can recover in the other region, whatever the regions that you have selected. Now, in this particular case, let's assume that you want to recover your application environment in the other region, um, which is basically the Northern California region in, in our demo case. If you go to the Northern California, you can see uh, Northern California region, uh, there are no load balances and uh, there are no uh, instances running. And all we have to do is to use the Pranix to create the entire application environment with dependencies and all the resources automatically with that click of a button. So if you're using iPad, obviously you touch of a button, right? So here, uh, test recovery, uh, you can recover in the same region. And you have multiple options. Uh, you can create a new VPC that way the environment is completely isolated uh, for you to test multiple times. Or you can use the same VPC as production where you might uh, have run into situations like a virtual machine failing for whatever reason, or you might be even willing to change a virtual machine machine type to another uh, machine type. Or you might set up a permanent uh, VPC for DR test purposes where you have configured your connections back into your data center, all the gateways and so on. Uh, in this particular case, you can use existing VPC as well. Um, you can recover specific resources. You can select a particular virtual machine uh, or you can recover the entire assembly as well. Uh, for demo purposes, let's go to the other region. Uh, when you have only one region selected, uh, when you create the cloud connection, uh, this particular recovery region is automatically populated. And again, you have two different options, one to create a new VPC or you can use an existing VPC in the other region uh, for you to recover as well. Now, for recovery purposes, um, um, in this particular case, we'll use the entire assembly. And again, you have the specific resources uh, as well. Or you can use um, the tags. Hey, I want to just recover those resources, only 10 resources uh, and associated dependent resources automatically using a set of application tags. You can do that as well. Um, so for the demo purposes, I selected other region and recover in this particular case, all the resources will be created uh, in the Northern California region. When you click this recovery, it gives you another option uh, to enable the reset. Uh, let's say if you're doing DR tests or if you're doing dev test environment cloning and so on, uh, you can simply uh, select that automatic reset uh, capability where you, you know, after let's say one hour, two hours or four hours depending on how many hours you want to run this environment for testing purposes. Maybe you are doing some application verification and so on, right? In that particular case, simply select the number of hours that you want us to keep the environment. And after that, Apprentice will automatically delete all the resources that were recovered, except the data, because the data uh, are protected based on your policies uh, that you set up before, right? Uh, daily, weekly, monthly, and so on. Um, so, after selecting that option, you simply say recover, and that is all you have to do, right? Um, with respect to any type of recovery, whenever you run into a problem, any type of downtime, uh, could be a ransomware recovery problem, or it could be uh, a bad deployment issue, or a cloud region going down, uh, or a specific cloud service going down, right? In all those cases, all you do is to come here, select a particular point in time and hit recovery, and all the resources, all the security groups, the network uncle, uh, the VPC, uh, the internet gateways, the cider blocks, all of that are getting recovered based on your production environment. So if you go into 
uh, the Cloud Console itself, uh, as you can see, if you refresh it, you have the recovery coming up. And you can see if you go into the resources, all those resources are being created as we speak. So if you go into the template itself, uh, looking at the template um, with respect to a graphical view of that, you can see um, a nice um, set of resources are being created. So every one of these dots, as you can see, is all configurations and all these dependencies are already mapped. And if you look at the infrastructure code itself, it's, uh, it's not complex. Uh, it's about 1,000 lines of code. And um, you know, if you look at uh, the dependency, the configuration, the tags, uh, the sequencing, all of that are automatically taken care of for you. Right? And the responsibility is given back to AWS in a different region. Right? So even if you have thousands and thousands of resources, very similar to some of our uh, customer environments, in real life recovery scenarios, our system has created like 60,000 lines of code across multiple different stacks, nested stacks with that single click. And of course, depending on the number of resources, um, AWS or Azure uh, or the GCP might take time to create those resources, but as a user, of centrally managing uh, a cloud application environment or uh, multiple cloud application environments without knowing all the details of how those applications have been put together by different application groups or uh, operations groups or system or platform groups. If you are responsible for maintaining the resiliency of your application, uh, basically recovering that air application environment is that single touch of a button, right? So uh, once that is created, you can see the recovery is uh, um, uh, progressing right now, and you can see all the uh, logs so that you can have an audit log. Uh, even otherwise, you know, after the recovery is complete, all the uh, protection as well as uh, recovery reports will be available for you. Uh, so you can go back and, uh, you know, uh, get the for compliance reasons, you can uh, get your reports uh, quickly, uh, depending on the cloud that you have, uh, those reports will automatically show up. Uh, for example, if you wanted to go back to recoveries, obviously uh, today is the first recovery. So if you go back in time, let's say uh, 2020, and um, so let's say 19th is my favorite time frame, right? You know, all the way back to a year ago, uh, you can see there was another recovery uh, triggered at the time. It took about three minutes and 44 seconds, and it was automatically reset after an hour or so. And you can see all these resources that were brought up at the time from the East Coast to the West Coast. So if you go into the instances here, if you look at the Northern California running instances, and uh, uh, you see these instances with all the security configurations, all the networking, um, all the storage and the tags will be automatically recovered for you. So if you go into the load balancer, as an example, if you just refresh it, you have the load balances uh, recovered as well. Uh, the listeners, the tags, all of that, you don't have to worry about how they were put together. In fact, Apranix will automatically adjust the zones based on the availability of the number of zones in a particular region. So let's say if you're coming from the East Coast to the West Coast, um, the East Coast uh, number of region, a uh, number of zones are different from the West Coast. We have six different zones on AWS uh, for the East Coast. On the West Coast, uh, depending on the region type, you have two or three different zones. So, Pranix automatically reconfigures all those resources appropriately so that you can guarantee your recovery. That's the idea of using cloud native capabilities along with your data so that you can recover your resources really quickly as well as confidently. In this particular case, as you can see, um, the cloud assembly that was in question, if you go into the timeline and if you look at uh, the recovery itself, the recovery is now complete. It took about four minutes and 10 seconds. Again, you are operating your applications on a shared public cloud, and what used to take a three minute, roughly three minutes 
um, 10 seconds. Now it's, it's taken about four minutes and 10 seconds. Again, this is why uh, you have to uh, test your applications multiple times. And for testing purposes, we have also automated that. Uh, for example, you can simply go and say, create a recovery simulation, wherein you select either daily, weekly, monthly automated tests, and appliance will run them for you, produce a report, and put them in the resilience insights where you can get those reports, recovery reports, in a timely fashion for your compliance purpose and also your, for your confidence, right? So using Appliance is very, very simple. All you have to do is to get started with a simple account and Appranix will guide you appropriately to protect your environment. Thank you.